Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to do a little PSA and remind you that I put out multiple shows a week of Old Time Radio Westerns. You can check them out by going to otrwesterns.com or looking up OTR Westerns on your podcast application of choice. We are releasing over 10 episodes a week so far, about 100 a month. So definitely want you to check that out. Again, otrwesterns.com and check it out. I also wanted to invite you to check out my sister podcast site, OT Netcast, and that's N-E-T-C-A-S-T. So O-T N-E-T-C-A-S-T, Netcast, otnetcast.com. We're currently releasing mystery genre shows, and this is shows like The Shadow, Escape, Suspense, and The Whistler. And we have plans on bringing other shows to the network for you guys to listen to. So it's my non-Western old-time radio channel that I can kind of do other genres that not only I like, but hopefully you would like too. You can check us out by going to otnetcast.com or searching O-T-N-E-T-C-A-S-T on your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is July 15th, 1956, and the title is Letters of the Law. Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Oh, morning, Kitty. Well, you're out early today. I'm a working man. I have to keep regular hours. Oh, then what were you doing at the Long Branch at 2 o'clock this morning? Uh, well, sometimes it's a regular 24 hours, <laughs> just like you. Well, at least I make good money at it. <laughs> Kitty, would you really like to see me settle down and run a saloon? You might get to like it. All right, I'll do it. When? But I'm about 50. <laughs> I thought so. Good morning, Miss Kitty. Oh, hello, Chester. Here's a letter for you, Mr. Jones. Oh, thanks, Chester. Uh, the envelope says it's from Judge Rambo over in Wichita. Mm-hmm. Anything important? Yeah, it's a court order for eviction. Yeah... Seems Brandon Teak didn't file legally on his land over by Wagon Mount. Did you say Brandon Teak? Oh, do you know him, Kitty? Everybody knew him, Ron Abilene. Yeah, he had a pretty bad reputation then, I guess. Doesn't he still? Well, I haven't seen him for some time, but uh, he's married now, and he's trying to prove up some land. Well, I don't envy you trying to put him off it. Brandon Teak never shoved very easy, that I recall. Well, uh, we'll ride out there this afternoon, Chester. Be sure your gun's loaded, Matt. Hell, well, maybe I won't need it, Kitty. <laughs> Want to bet? Uh, no, I guess not. <laughs> You 
you ask me, Teak's gone and built himself a mighty nice place out here, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, he's doing fine. Hello, Teak. Uh, hello, Marshal. Chester. How are you, Teak? What brings you out this way? Well, uh... Here, you, you might as well read it yourself. What's this? Court order. Immediate eviction. What's this all about, Marshal? I got my deed to this place. Yeah, but you failed to register it at the land office, Teak. Nobody told me about that. I'm sorry. You'll be a whole lot sorry you try to put me off this land, Marshal. Brandon, who are you talking to? Uh, uh, you stay inside, sir. It ain't nothing. Then it won't hurt if I come out. Uh, uh, this is my wife, Marshal Dillon and Chester Proudwood. How do you do, Mr. Ma'am? Is there trouble, Brandon? They say we got no legal right to this place, Sarah. I didn't register the deed or some fool thing. Oh, no. Oh, no, don't you worry. Ain't nobody gonna move us off, law or no law. It's a court order, Teak. I ain't wore a gun since I got married, Marshal, but I can sure go put one on. We're going to have a child, Marshal. Most any day now. And we ain't moving. We ain't starting over again. Oh, if we have to, we can do it. I'd rather die and see you go to fighting again, Brandon. Now you think on it. It's a hard thing for a man to swallow, but I can't go get her. I ain't putting on my gun. Now, why don't you go in and tell her that? When will I tell her we got to get off the place? Oh, there's no hurry. What about that immediate eviction? Well, uh, I'll be responsible for that. I guess I ought to be, be grateful to you. No, no, Teague, not to me. <laughs> well, goodbye. Bye, Marshal. Chester. Bye, Teague. When are you going to put him off, Mr. Dillon? I'm going over to Wichita, Chester. I'll find out there. You've heard Bobby Haggard whistling it on radio and television. Right now, a country-style version. Okay, partners? more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better, and Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Judge. Uh, Marshal Dillon, what are you doing in Wichita? Well, I came to see you. Oh, that's so? It's about that court order you sent me, Judge. Which court order, Marshal? The one to evict Brandon Teak off his land near Wagon Mount. Oh, that. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, I remember. Uh, what's the trouble? Is he putting up a fight? No, he isn't. Well, he sure must have changed. 
I remember Teak around here. He was a wild one. Well, he's married now, Judge. As a matter of fact, they're expecting a child any day. A child? Mm Mm-hmm. So, uh, I told him that uh, they could take their time about moving. Take their time? Yeah. That order was to evict them at once, Marshal. Yeah, I know that, Judge. There's no room for sentiment in the law, Marshal Dillon. What's right is right, and what's legal is legal. Look, Judge, Teak's been on that land for over a year. How come this business about failing to register his deed just came up? It was only recently brought to my attention. And who brought it to your attention? Uh, Lee Sprague. Not that it makes any difference. Lee Sprague, huh? He owns a lot of land around Wagon Mound, doesn't he? And he's filed on this. There's nothing irregular about it, Marshal, if that's what you're thinking. Well, legally, I'm sure everything's correct, Judge. You can't argue with facts, Marshal. Now stop being a sentimental fool and, and, and go do your duty. Brandon takes a changed man, Judge. He's done more than prove up that land. He's proved himself up, too. Homestead Act, 1862, paragraph 12. After one year, if the deed to such land is not duly recorded at the nearest government Oh, never office, mind, Judge. I know how it reads. Well, then start acting like it. I can hold even a United States Marshal in contempt of court, you know. Yeah. Yeah, sure you can. You got a lot of power, Judge. But there's only one thing wrong. And what's that? You never learned how to use it. Marshal Dillon. I want to talk to you, Sprague. Come in. Thank you. How'd you know I was in Dodge today? I found out. It's about Brandon Teak, Sprague. Something wrong? No, not legally. Uh, <laughs> Judge Rambo made that pretty clear. Want to tell me what's bothering you, Marshal? Yeah, Sure. I think Brandon Teak deserves that land more than you do. Marshal, I'm in the land and cattle business, and I'm making out mighty well. No man can accuse me ever doing anything illegal or dishonest. But everybody knows I practice sharp, and I'll go on practicing sharp, too. Even against a man like Teak, who's hung up his gun and settled down and tried to make a life for him and his family? What do you mean, his family? Uh, there's a child coming any day now. Hmm. And he's better off in town, Marshal. What? My wife stayed in the country. That's why I lost her. Looks to me I'm doing Teak a favor. You got an awful easy conscience, Sprague. No use arguing, Marshal. You got your order. Now go put him off. No, Sprague, I'm not going to do it. What? I couldn't hold my head up if I had any part of the kind of law you and Judge Rambo want. You mean that? I do. I ain't gonna let you stand in my way, Marshal. You're in for trouble. It's Brandon Teak and his Mrs. Bull talking that fall, Mr. Dillon. You recognize him, Chester? No, sir, I don't. He's a stranger to me. Ah. Looks like they're all head up over something, don't they? Yeah. Miss Teak hadn't ought to be standing out in the heat of the day this way. Will that Marshal Dillon settle this, Haley? He's got nothing to do with it no more. Ma'am. How do, Marshal? What's the trouble here, Teak? You told me there was no hurry about our leaving, Marshal. Ah, wait a minute. Where'd you get that badge, mister? Who are you? I'm Jim Haley, Marshal. Deputy Sheriff from Wichita. Wichita? Well, how'd you get here? I took the Santa Fe to Dodge, then I rented me a horse. Answer me, Haley. Judge Rambo sent me. I guess he felt the law needed a little enforcing down this way. He's got a court order, Marshal, just like the one you had. It's plumb legal. 
And I want you people to pack up and be out of here by tomorrow. Just a minute, Haley. I can take care of him, Marshal. No, Brandon, there'll be no fighting. Now, sir, You I... ain't gonna do nothing except move, Teak, and right now. No! So, woman, you let go my arm! <laughs> Now, now wait a minute, Marshal. She shouldn't have grabbed my arm like that. I was only trying to do... Get his gun, Chester. Yes, sir. Is she hurt, Teak? You all right, Sarah? I'll be all right. She only grabbed his arm. He's gone and hurt her, Marshal, flinging her off like that. Chester. Yes, sir. Jump on your horse and ride for Dodge, huh? Tell Doc to get out here. Fast. Never coming out of that house. Yeah. It's been a long time, hasn't it? She, uh, she shouldn't have grabbed me. I, uh, I didn't mean to hurt her. Haley, why don't you keep quiet? Nobody wants to hear from you. Look, Mr. Dillon, there, Doc. Huh? You don't look none too happy. Well, Doc? The baby's dead, man. Oh, my. It's too bad. Well, I didn't do it. I, I only pushed her a little. I told I... you to shut up, Haley. There wasn't a chance of saving the baby. It's her I've been working on. And she's going to be all right now, man. Yeah. Well, good for that anyway. Hey. Doc, tell you, Marshal. Hey, yeah, Tick. I'm sorry to hear it. Uh, I, I'm sorry, too, but you, you can't blame me for Haley, it. Haley, I just now promised my wife I wouldn't kill you. Don't make me break it. Come on, Haley. I'm taking you to Dodge with me. Hey, now, look here. Ain't you forgetting I'm a lawman, too, Marshal? I'd like to forget it. It doesn't make me very proud of being one. I come here to do a job, and I'm going to do it. I promised her I wouldn't kill you now, Haley, but you come back here, and I promise you I will. A man can only take so much. I'll be back. No, you won't. I'm throwing you in jail for a while. Jail? Teak, as soon as your wife's better, you come see me, huh? I don't know what I can do, but things aren't going on this way. <laughs> Where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your kitchen? Getting ready for Sunday supper? Maybe in your living room, relaxing? Or out driving? Say, be sure and watch the road. But remember, there's pleasure ahead when you smoke Chesterfield. When you satisfy yourself with Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. It stands to reason. A cigarette made better and packed better... Smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> Hello, Chester. Hello, Doc. Where's Matt, Chester? In the office, talking to Lee Sprague. Sprague? 
It's a little late to be talking to him, isn't it? I'd say so. You sure Brandon Teague's come to Dodge today, Doc? That's what he told me. There's a neighbor woman staying with his wife. Not that she really needs anybody now. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's only been a week, but she's a strong woman. Oh. Well, here we are. Huh? Yeah, oh, my God, he did come. Hello, Doc. Chester. Oh, hello, hello Teak. How's the patient? Uh, she's pretty good, Doc. Being awful brave about it, but I know how she feels. Only time will cure that. I guess so. Uh, Mr. Dillon's in the office, Teak. He wanted you to go right on in when you got here. Okay. Oh, hello, Teak. Come on in. You know Lee Sprague? Yeah, I know him. Hello, Teak. Uh, Sprague and I were over at the land office this morning. I think we got everything straightened out. What do you mean? Here. Take a look at this. What is it? That's a deed to the land you're on, Teak, and this time it's legally registered. Yeah, sure. In your name. That's right. You help him with this, Marshal? Well, I wanted to be sure that there weren't any loopholes, Teak. You know, if it wasn't for my wife, you people would have to shoot me off that place. Teak, I want to tell you something. Ain't you said enough, Sprague? No. Now, listen. I'm a greedy man, Teak, and I'll take anything I can get legally. But Marshal Dillon here has been talking pretty hard to me lately. Sure, and I've been listening to him, too. I guess I'd have gone right on, and I could have... I heard about your baby. Why should that matter to you? I lost my son, Teak. But I lost my wife, too. Are taking my land going to help you? You tell him, Marshal. He's not taking your land, Teak. That deed's in his name, ain't it? Didn't you go along to be sure he didn't make any mistakes? There aren't any mistakes this time. Sprague can deed that land to anybody he wants to now. All clear. And it's yours. I'm not giving it to you. It's yours anyway. I'll I'll tell Sarah. And I'll I'll tell her she was right all along about about not fighting. Yeah. Well, I, I, what about you, Marshal? Ain't there gonna be trouble you jailing a deputy sheriff? <laughs> Well, as soon as he gets back to Wichita, I suppose there might be some trouble, yeah. <laughs> but don't you worry about that, Teak. I've always wanted to see California anyway. moment our star, William Conrad. What's your idea of vacation pleasure? Mountains? Seashore? Lake? Wherever you go, here's an idea for your smoking pleasure. Take along a couple of cartons of Chesterfields. Chesterfields are firm, packed full, give you full-time flavor that's bound to make whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Vacation bound by Chesterfields, by the cartons. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, on the frontier, a horse thief was often caught and hung because someone else's brand was on the animal he'd stolen. But next week, a man is hung because his horse has no brand at all. But that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Vic Perrin, Helen Cleed, Paul Dubov, and Will Wright. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Live Modern. Smoke l and Live modern, change to L&M. Only with L&M 
drink and you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive, live modern, smoke L&M. Live modern, change to L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on gun smoke. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.